Time to play with some clay. All right, I'm going to start working on the uh, the legging on the left leg of the uh, warrior crazy horse and uh, I've got my little GoPro 5 set up so that I can get a close-up of what I'm working on um, all right the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make the uh, lower cuff of the uh, legging and I'll be putting that through my pasta machine The clay is just warm. It's not super warm, not super cold, just warm. And you just put the uh, clay through slowly and it comes out evenly pressed. <coughs> Somebody made a comment that I should get this stuff here, this orange glow, uh, and clean my rollers with it. It's a wood furniture uh, cleaner, but it works really good for the uh, rollers and makes it so that the uh, clay goes through the uh, rollers a lot easier. The next thing I need to do is now I gotta cut this with a knife so I can square off the edge. And then I'm gonna put it about the same distance down on the uh, moccasin as the other one and then I just uh, wrap it around and uh, where it meets I cut it off I have to put my magnifiers on because my eyes ain't that good anymore. And I just start cutting a fringe on the bottom. It's not long fringe, just short fringe. I'm doing it just the way I would do it if I was cutting it on real leather. I got to tell you, it's a lot easier to uh, cut this fringe on this board than it is to do it on the figure. That's why I'm doing it off the figure. And I may... Now I'll show you in a second. Now I'm going to start the uh, seam at the outside because that's the part that's going to be covered up by the uh, fringe anyway so and it looks pretty good when it's on there I'm going to separate some of these a little bit more than others and maybe even cut out one because as the uh, leather gets used uh, Parts of it break off uh, fringe wise. I don't want to do too much back here because this is going to be filled in underneath. I just want to part some of these uh, fringes. Just a little tip, I just uh, banged the armature three times with my hammer to give me a sharp 
note on my soundtrack of my video so that I can line up those sharp ticks on both the one camera to the other camera. That way I can line up perfectly and sync it uh, so that both cameras work uh, well, the same. So I've, if I'm talking and I switch cameras, I don't switch my voice. My voice stays the same and uh, exactly what I'm doing uh, stays the same, but just a different view. Just a little videoing tip, if you are curious. All right. Of course, I cut that out as I'm working. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start the uh, wrinkles in the uh, clothing. And uh, I'll come back when I have most of that done. I do cover this in some of my instructional DVDs. And uh, so I'm not going to show it here. Um, if you're interested in learning how to sculpt or improving what you already know, you can take advantage of my over 50 years of sculpting by getting some of my instructional DVDs. And I've got nine of them and the link to how to purchase it and also uh, to view a review of each one is down in the uh, video description below this video. All right, be back in a few. I'm just putting the finishing touches on the uh, wrinkles in the leggings. Both leggings have to be uh, fine-tuned, but uh, it's coming out good. It really helps to have really soft clay when you do this. Okay, I'm going to uh, plot out the seam. Go to legging. I had a photograph of some war, uh, of a jet gentleman dressed in leggings, leather leggings, and that's where I've got the idea for the uh, wrinkles. Okay, I've got to pick the right tool for the texturing because I'm going to have to keep it the same all the way through. If I change tools and it changes the texturing, it'll be noticeable. The idea is to make, give it a feel of gravity, pulling down on the uh, weight of the leather and make it look like it's natural. Yeah, I like the stiffness that the monster clay ended up being. It's a lot better than having it soft clay because soft clay, every time you touch it, would start uh, losing its uh, detail. All right, I've got this fringe that I've run through the uh, pasta machine. I'm going to start, you know, it's made out of the uh, monster clay. Now remember, I've got to do this in a way that looks like fringe without causing any problems in the mold making process. 
So I've got to fill in underneath that fringe where it leaves the pants leg and touches the ground. And I got to do it in such a way that it doesn't look like I filled it in. And you just very gently adjust the monster clay. I cut it at an angle so that uh, it fits nicely on the uh, seam. I start from the bottom and work up because it's, again, you're working with gravity and you want to have the uh, fringe look natural. And if you start from the top and work down, it'll always be on top of each other the wrong way. So it's better to make it look more natural. Sort of like putting shingles on a roof. You don't start from the top peak of the roof, you start from the bottom edge. Same principle. I'm going to uh, paint the fringe. And for those of you who watching are for the first time, what I do is I, I went and got some paint mixed that would uh, match the color of the clay. So that in cases like this, it'll kind of fill in crevices that uh, need to be filled in and I will still have to come back and fill in crevices in the fringe with clay to make it easier for the uh, boundary to clean the finished bronze. If you leave little tiny crevices for the shell or the uh, ceramic mold to be left behind in your casting, uh, and they can't get it out by, by sandblasting it, what happens is that little tiny speck of mold or shell will come out looking just like a bright white spot in the middle of your beautiful bronze. And so what I do is I do everything I can to fill in my clay. Now, monster clay doesn't react to uh, Ronsonol, the same that, uh, same as uh, this oil-based clay here does. I don't know what is exactly in monster clay, but it doesn't react the same way to Ronsonol as uh, regular clay does. All right, I'm going to Quit talking and get to painting. It goes on shiny, but it, it dulls down as it uh, dries and becomes more like the uh, color of uh, this uh, monster clay that I painted last week. This will be the last thing I do today because after I do this, I got to let the paint dry and it takes a little while for it to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I, I'm going to try to take a drive tomorrow. I, I haven't been down to West Yellowstone in a long time and I thought I'd take you guys on a trip with me. So I'll see how that works out and how the weather is. I tried to video me going to the foundry yesterday, but it was raining so bad you couldn't see anything out the windshield. And I wasn't going to put the camera outside because it would be just about as bad as keeping it inside the windshield. All right. Good night, everybody. See you next time. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right. 
See you next time.